I want you to be able to go out and argue the case on your own against the alarmists. The IPCC mandate also says that they're supposed to review the literature, the scientific literature, relevant to the understanding of the risk of human-induced climate change. You can see from this that the IPCC is oriented towards human-induced climate change. In other words, they're biased. We are not. We are willing to look at human-induced climate change. We're willing to look at natural climate change. Enough about the IPCC, except let me just put down here their main conclusion, which is only one conclusion, is that global warming is human caused. That's their conclusion. And they say they are 90 to 99 percent sure. That's a joke. How do they know that they're 90? How, I mean, how can you tell that you're 99 percent sure? And why aren't they 100 percent sure? Well, <laughs> they're trying to scare the public. But they have no evidence, no evidence that is any good. That's what I want to show you this morning so that you can go out and argue the case against the alarmists. Our conclusion is, and you can look at the NIPCC on the web, nature, not human activity, rules the climate. Carbon dioxide is not a pollutant. That is, mitigation is pointless. It makes no sense. It has no effect on climate. It is very costly, it's ineffective, and it builds a huge bureaucracy. It interferes with your freedom. It's a bad idea, and it's not needed. OK, this is the main idea. And now let's go into some details and look at the evidence that the IPCC has produced. And I'd like to tell you why this evidence is worthless. First, as you know, they claim a scientific consensus. Not true. That's easily disproved. In the first place, as you all know or should know, science is not based on consensus. But even then, there is no consensus. We have in our big report, an appendix, listing the names of 31,000 scientists who disagree with the IPCC. Their names are listed. They're willing to sign their names to this. We've collected them. They're all listed in the appendix to our report. They come from many different places and have many different skills. About one-third, almost 10,000, have doctorate degrees, PhDs. So there are serious people who have looked at the evidence and have decided that the IPCC is wrong. I think this disproves the idea of a scientific consensus. But let me just show you a small cartoon here. This is our chairman of the IPCC here. See him? Well, it doesn't look like him, but it's, it's uh, Rajendra Pachauri. And he's addressing the scientists and saying, if you can't read it, hands up. Who thinks greenhouse gases have no effect and therefore we all need new jobs? Anyone? Nobody raises his hand. So part of the problem is, of course, that the government is spending huge amounts of money to support the idea that humans are causing climate change and that it needs to be regulated. Quickly go back. The 20, they claim the 20th century is the warmest in a thousand years. Not true. The data show that a thousand years ago during the Middle Ages, it was warmer here than it is today. 
we have records of wine being grown in Scandinavia, grapes being grown, wine being produced in the north of England, exported to France, the French complaining from the competition of English wines, if you can imagine that. So it, was, it was much warmer a thousand years ago than today. The ice didn't melt away. The polar bears didn't disappear. So whenever people come up and tell me that the situation is getting serious, I remind them that a thousand years ago it was much warmer and there were no calamities. In fact, people thrived. Warm climate is better than colder climate. Please remember that. A warmer climate is better than a colder climate. Much better. That's why people move south. That's why many of you have holidays in Spain or North Africa. Okay, glaciers are melting when it warms and glaciers grow when it cools. But this cannot tell you the cause of warming or cooling. So I maintain that knowledge of glaciers is not relevant to our discussion. We only need to look at thermometers. That's enough. Thermometers are sufficient for measuring temperature. No unusual weather. If you look at statistics, you'll see that the hurricanes have not increased, droughts have not increased, floods have not increased. They occur during the 20th century at the normal rate, at which they've always taken place. A very important point. Al Gore has claimed that there's a strong correlation between carbon dioxide and temperature. That's true in the past, in ice cores. You can see that. However, that doesn't tell you what, which is the cause, which is the effect. So let me show you something about this. By the way, this is the real situation from the first IPCC report showing the medieval warm period around 1100 AD. Then there was a little ice age when it was very cold in Europe. And now we're recovering from the ice age. It'll probably warm again. And then it'll cool again and warm again and cool again. That's the way climate has been changing for thousands of years. The IPCC published a report down below claiming that there was no Middle Age warming and th there was no Little Ice Age and suddenly temperatures shot up in the 20th century. This graph is called the hockey stick because it looks like a hockey stick. You see the shaft here and the blade here. This graph is fake. It is not based on good data and it is done with a poor analysis. And even the IPCC no longer quotes the graph. They used it in the year 2001 in their third report, but no longer. I want to show you some data from the Antarctic. Here you see temperature in blue, carbon dioxide in red, going back 400,000 years. You see the ice ages here. You see the interglacial warm period between ice ages. We are now here. We're in a warm period after the last ice age, waiting for the next ice age to come. 